we'll go uh we'll go hang out hang out with you guys yep huh? i think soto's here soto's here yep 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 good let, let us say hi and then i must hit the button welcome to the vr trip stream everybody we'll be getting started here pretty soon uh hope you're having a good sunday so far <laughs> get blue phoenix here <laughs> Fargo. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to tonight's <laughs> Sunday service. <laughs> I I really don't know what I really don't know what else other to say than that. I don't either. This is not my specialty talking on camera. But hopefully, DJ has just arrived, yeah. so this will help. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll wait but anyway, you. welcome everybody. We're glad to have you with us this Sunday, and uh, we really. We're really looking forward to seeing you guys here. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. Good. I like these new cameras. Oh, yeah, yeah the they're great. Here, let, me, let me get a picture. Yeah, the new cameras are great with the new depth of field. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like all, like, um, what do you call it? F-stops and whatnot. Mm-hmm, yeah. I was, I was joking about how when we, when we met in person, I was like taller than you were. <laughs> it was so weird. I to like crouch a little bit compared to normal. Yeah. That'll work. Hey, get one with me, DJ. Oh yeah, all right, hold on a second. Hold still. Everybody hold still. All right. This is for the, this is for the grams. The social for the grams. Do, it, do it for the gram. For the two, for the male. Hey, Fanta. <laughs> nice. Got How you doing? Awesome. What nerd? Oh, Jerry, what? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jerry. How are you doing? Jerry's. Alrighty. Well, I'll see what you. is that? It looks like a penguin yep, mixed with a Welcome dactyl, to church. We're going to get started in a few moments. Feel free to relax. Hang out. Chat. Meet some new friends. Seal. What's up, Sonic? Hey. Hey. How are you? Sonic, oh, long time no what? see, my friend. <laughs> yeah, how are you? How's it going, boss? Uh, I've been doing pretty good. Been doing pretty good. December 16th, I take my firefighter's exam. Oh, sweet. Congrats. Thank All you. Thank support. you very much. I, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Nathan, right. how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty, pretty good. Oh, Tay Vox, you well. Hey, Dragon, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Not too bad. Is your first time yeah, I'm doing here? virtual desktop for the first time. It's actually working pretty good. Is your first time here? Discord server for a while. I just never got around to yeah, no it. Right. Feels uh, see, I was having the audio problems in alt space, and I wonder if it was Airlink. So I switched I over to desktop. It was ahead. Yeah. I came in. It was ahead. No, no, no problems. How do I sound? Do I sound okay? I'm excited. Yeah. All right, but I'm just saying. Yeah, good to me. Yeah. I'll fly out to Tennessee, okay. and we'll go to a drag race. How about that? I want to go to a drag Then what do you want to go to? Yeah, I'm having the same problems. Or, or earlier, I guess not now, but... No, motorsports. Yes, yes, motorsports. 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 <clears throat> okay. So when Elena will come back here, I miss her. Yeah, we haven't seen her in a while. Maybe next no, Sunday, but... That. Maybe after Christmas. Yeah, maybe after Thanksgiving. Motorsport. We'll see. Oh, that reminds oh, yeah, me. Actually, I need to call her. We all miss Alina. But I'm she's you can set up her new her new afternoon. house, so that'll be good. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's always a big uh, endeavor. It's going good. Also, awesome. Hot damage. Hey, Scary, how are you doing? I used to be able to climb these pretty good. I'm better now. Pretty good. How are you? What? Whoa! Ah, <laughs> That's nice. Oh, nanny, I don't know who's 
little thing so when she gets up there <laughs> I just wait for you to come in nope tell me it doesn't work how much do I have Enrico also Enrico Hey. Ooh. Ooh. If God's not real, then why does the hand of a man fit so perfectly around the neck of a goose? This is freaky. Right. Jordan, <laughs> if God's not real, then yeah. why does the hand hey, of a man hey. fit so perfectly around the neck of a goose? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still wondering that myself. <laughs> Literally, you can just just bring the lights out of it, you know. <laughs> John, he said it. Hey, hey. Turn around. Since you messaged last night about <laughs> what happened. Hi. <laughs> was it last night? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you made it. So. Hey. I'll switch now. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, you want to hear yeah, country? No, I'm... Hello, friends. Welcome to church. We're gonna get actually. We're about to start right now, actually. So good to see everyone. Uh, feel free to grab a seat. A couple of pre-church announcements in mind. Uh, num announcement number one. Uh, during the service, it's helpful if you keep your microphone muted, uh, especially if you're not wearing headphones. We got a lot of background noises. So if you don't mind checking that out, uh, if it's noisy where you're at, um, and making sure you mute up a bit, that'd be great. Uh, announcement number two. Uh, announcement number two is if you have an optimized avatar, that'd be great. I'm, this is like Quest compatible. Um, I know uh, it's kind of a bummer if you don't use that, but that would help out with the server, especially as people trickle in and the room starts to fill up and it's already quite cool as it is. Um, so if you don't mind switching to an optimized avatar, that'd be helpful. And then after church, feel free to go into full avatar glory um, if you want. So uh, that will just help with the server load. And yeah, those are the two main announcements. So good to see you here at church uh, um, this morning, afternoon, evening. I don't know what time of day it is for you. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get right into the scriptures here in just a minute. I want to take a moment to pray uh, to open up our service, and then after I pray, um, yeah, just a couple of official announcements, and then we'll go. It's so so good to see everybody. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. I don't think so. We're live. We're good on the Twitch side. All right. Um, yeah, let's take a moment to pray. Father, thank you for this time where we can come and worship. We can pray. Uh, we can learn uh, in the scriptures. And I just pray that everyone today would be encouraged by what they hear, by what, what they see in the Bible. And may they be impacted by the reality that God really does love them. He doesn't have lightning bolts for them. He has love for them. It's not hell he wants people to experience. It's his love. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before I get going with the sermon for today, I was having some audio problems earlier in Altspace. How do I... Am I okay? Give me some thumbs up. If my audio is okay, some thumbs down. Loud and clear? All right, well, thank you so much. All right, before we get into the sermon, a few announcements for you. Uh, first of all, a couple of websites to check out. If this is your first time at VR Church and you want to learn more, um, we got the uh, VR website down here, vrchurch.org, to check that out. We also have a ministry called MMO Church, uh, which is church planting in MMOs, things like Final Fantasy and Rust. So if you are part of those communities, maybe you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, check out these websites. But really, the, the main reason I want you to go here um, is so that you can go to our Discord server. So if you're not part of our Discord, um, it's really important you go check that out because everyone is welcome. It, regardless if you believe in God or not. So maybe you're an atheist or agnostic or, or whatever. We definitely are welcome to be a part of our community. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, so vrchurch.org, mmo.church. And yeah, those are the main announcements. I think we are talking with a couple of leaders about starting a VR chat group during the week. Um, so pay attention to that coming up soon. All right, but that's all for the main announcements for today. And let's jump into the scriptures. We are studying the book of 1 John in the Bible, and now we are in the next chapter. So if this is your first time, what we like to do is read one chapter of the Bible every week. So we've been doing that for a long time. And today, some of you might say, Pastor, I 
keep hearing the same theme over and over again. Ever kind of got annoyed, maybe not annoyed, but just kind of like, why does my teacher or my parent or my friend or, you know, whoever keep repeating this? You know, maybe it's a, a, a boss at your work. They're repeating something over and over again. Well, probably because they want you to never get, they, especially if it's something very important with your job. Don't forget this. I'm going to repeat it over and over and over so it gets stuck in your brain. And so today, you're going to hear this theme about loving one another. And for some of us, I know you're not annoyed or anything, but I'm just saying, this is being just kind of fun. Some of us might go, you know what? Hey, Jonas, you got to go? Yeah, yeah. All right, see you, buddy. Have a great night. All right. Yeah, get some good rest. See you, buddy. And so for some of us, we're going to be like, man, we keep hearing this message. And But I think that the writer knows us as humans, that we can tend to fall away from loving one another. And, you know, the person at work or at school, we just want to punch in the throat, right? And so um, the writer is encouraging us to stay in love. I think there is another writer in the scripture named Paul who says, I'm going to keep reminding you about this. That's basically what he said. It's kind of like his later phrase. I'm going to keep reminding you about this love for one for another. Uh, because when it comes to faith, when it comes to God, it's easy to get up in arrogant religion, where it, it's not that we love other people, but we're just very super religious people. We go to church, and we're moral, and we have these theological beliefs. And the writer is like, no, no, no. What we need to be doing is loving one another. You know, going to church is fine. Being moral is great. All those things, but to take it to the next level, what God wants us to experience is love. So. Don't be offended. I know you're not. I'm just saying, don't be irritated. Like this theme is just going to go over and over again. And I think it's important that we, we, we mention this because, you know, someone might say, you know, the Bible, it's kind of archaic. It's kind of old school, Pastor DJ. Don't you think this is kind of like outdated? Well, we haven't figured out loving one another yet. And until that happens, you know, I think that we need to pay close attention to this message. Okay, so enough of me uh, talking about that. Let's read uh, this uh, chapter of the Bible. It starts out very interesting, because it kind of starts out kind of somewhere else, and then it goes full circle. It's going to talk about being careful about false teachers, people that will pull you away from God's love. So read about that. It says this in the Bible, in First uh, John, dear, <clears throat> dear, dearly loved friends. Don't always believe everything you hear. So let's stop about stop there for a second. The scripture, the writer, is encouraging us to not believe everything anyone says when it comes to religious things, which is kind of a shocker, right? Because in some sense, we're taught to always just follow the pastor, always follow the church, always follow the bishop or the priest. But really, the scripture is saying is that, yeah, that's good. But also, you need to be a critical thinker. You need to think through things, especially when someone says, God says this. Well, you got to be careful because it might be a cult leader. And so it says, dear love friends, don't always believe everything you hear just because someone says it is a message from God. So I get up here and I says, I have a message from God. You need to do this. Now, the scripture is saying, don't just go do it. Take some time to think about it and to test it. And we're going to talk about some of the measurements of that testing. Um, and so uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I believe someone just is a message from God. There you go. Test it first. Now, some of us might say, but pastor, I just want you to tell me what to believe. I just want you to tell me what to think. And I, fair enough. You know, you're busy with school and work and jobs and family. It's, it's, t it's tough to take time to really think through something and to be a really critical thinker and to look at the scripture and to pray and to think about it. But the scripture is encouraging us to do that, to be people who are thinkers, who are testers. It doesn't mean we have to be obstinate, like, oh, I'm going to test everything and I'm going to be an angry person. No, no, no. It just means privately, quietly, humbly, take some time to think about it, chew on it. And the scripture is, interestingly enough, not saying, just follow whatever the pastor says. It's saying, take some time to think about what the pastor says. Or anyone that says, God told me this, and God told me that, right? And God, especially when 
when it gets to the point where it's like God told me to tell you to do this or to you to do that. Hey, what's up, Bryce? I can't hear you if you're talking because you're. Uh, I think you're auto muted. Good, good, good to see you. Hey. Oh yeah, I can't hear him. I think he's flipping off. A block for me. If he's talking, is he talking? You, can just, you guys can just mute him if he's like talking to you or whatever. What's up, Bryce? Good to see you, man. I hope you're doing well. You're, you're a, you're, you're a crash dummy to me, and um, you're muted, so I, that's I can't see you. Looks like you're waving at me. What's up? You're giving me the I love you sign. I love you. I love you too, man. Nothing but love for you. He's doing All right. middle finger. <laughs> He's giving me the. Uh, I don't see the middle finger. I just see the I love you sign. Nothing but love for you, Bryce. There you go. Right back at you. Um, all right. So test it first to see if it really is. For there are many false teachers around, and the way to find out if their message is, and the way to find out if their message is from the Holy Spirit is to ask. And we're about to check out what that means. Okay. So don't believe everything you hear, especially if someone says God told me to tell you this and God told me that you should do that. Take some time, test it, think about it. That responsibility is yours to chew on and to say yes or to say no. That is for you to decide. And you're going to develop that muscle, so to speak. So if you've never developed that muscle before, the scripture is encouraging you to develop that muscle to be a critical thinker. So here's one thing to add to your toolkit. All right, so you got, you'll think of, think of like a toolbox. Here's one thing to add to your toolkit. Does it really agree that Jesus Christ, God's son, actually became a man, became man, with a human body? If so, then the message is from God. Now, there's going to be other things we're going to add to our toolkit. But one is, if this person that says as a message from God, then they don't believe that Jesus even exists. That's a warning sign. It's okay to have red flags. You don't have to fight with the person. You're, we're, not try, we're not talking about creating these big arguments with people. What we're trying to do is just create create some red flags in our brains to protect us from false teaching that pull, pulls us away from love. So that's important. Um, and now we're going to have some other things as well, but um, here's some things, here's some things just to get it started. All right. So now to the next part, Let's see if I can reach the slide. There we go. If not, the message is not from God, but from one who is against Christ. And who is against Christ oftentimes? It's the arrogant religious people are against Christ. Man, they don't like this message of love and inclusivity. They don't like that at all. Um, the message is not from God, from, uh, from one, uh, but from, the, from one who is against Christ, like the Antichrist you have heard about who is going to come, and his attitude of enmity against Christ is already abroad in this world. Think about it for a second. Remember when Jesus walked on this earth? Who had the most problems with Jesus? Was it the Roman government? Was it quote-unquote secular society? No, it was the arrogant religious system of the day. That is against Christ. They were against Christ and his message of love. They were against the Apostle Paul who said all can be saved. They just didn't like the message of love and inclusivity. Um, so this attitude against Christ is already abroad in this world. And oftentimes, more often than not, I believe, it comes in the form of religiosity, religion. Um, dear young friends, you belong to God. If you weren't here with us the past couple of weeks, remember that the Bible is very clear. You are a son. You are a daughter of the Most High God. And the one scripture even said, take time. He didn't say take time to think about it. It says, think about it. You are a part of the family of God. It's like the writer in a previous chapter wanted us to pause, to really just take that in. This is not just me throwing out some fancy little spiritual things to you. That's, you know, hopes, hopefully it makes you feel better. No, the writer was like, this is the truth. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you're at with your faith in God, God, you are a part of the family of God, and you are a son, you are a daughter, you are children of the Most High God. And I, and I, I always like this illustration, and I know I'm bringing it up a million times. If you were to come over to my house, and by the way, you're welcome, I'd probably say something like, uh, mi casa su casa, is probably what I would say. But I don't mean that like entirely, meaning like if you're like waist deep into my fridge and like scrummaging all the stuff out, if I need you sleep into my bed, and they'd be like, wait, you know, time out, this is a little too far. But my children, 
Yeah, I have some sons and daughters. Yeah, man, they can go in my fridge anytime. They can sleep in my bed. They can play my video games, you know, whatever. Because family has a bit of a different privilege. And in the same way, you belong to God. It's not just platitudes. It's not just some nice things I'm saying. The truth is, think about it. Like the scripture says, you are a son, you are a daughter. And with that comes unique privileges. Because you're not just some peasant peon, you know, servant, just, you know, you're just out there on the, no, you're inside the family of God. You are, you belong. Okay. Dear young friends, you belong to God and have already won your fight. What are you going through? What are you fighting in your life? Addictions. I don't know what it is. Mental health, emotional, you know, strife. There is an endless list. We can go up and down the roads, including myself. Come back up and down these roads and say, all right, what you fighting? What you dealing with? What, what is de- deficient or defunct or dysfunctional in your life? And we can get a big fat list going. What's interesting is that the scripture is telling us in these words what our destiny is about that fight. I know it might not feel like it today. I know it might not feel like it tomorrow. But the reality is, whatever you're facing, you've won. That the writer wants us to get into our brains, into our thinking, into our psychology, the reality that this destiny is you've won. Whatever you're facing, you're not losing. You're not lost. God hates to lose in that regard, and he's not letting you go down. He wants to raise you up, and whatever you're facing, you're going to overcome. That's good news. The writer here is declaring the destiny for your life. So, It's time for us to get on board. Man, victory is coming. We've already won the fight. Now it's just a matter of realizing and coming into the reality of that. So we belong to God. We've won our fight. And specifically, he talks about those who are are false teachers, who are trying to pull you away from God's love. With those who are against Christ, because there is someone in your heart who is stronger than any evil teacher in this wicked world. Any cult leader, any wicked teacher, anybody that's going to pull you away from God's love and try to get you involved in hardcore religion, you will not be subject to that because you're going to live a life of love. These men belong to this world, so quite naturally they are concerned about worldly affairs and the world pays attention to them. So that just means that they can be really popular and say they have a message from God and maybe a lot of people listen to it, but you have the maturity to think about it, to test it, to raise up some red flags, to say no if you, you know, I need some time to think about it. Man, if, if you're dealing with some religious or spiritual situation and there is pressure for you to assimilate and accept something, man, that's a, that's a little bit of a, a flag. So these, these men, they're popular, lots of people listen to them, but they're false, they're false teachers. Hey, no worries, man. No worries at all. All right, so the next one. But we are children of God. Let that sink in yet again. That's who we are. See the idea? You're part of the family. God loves you. That is why only those who have walked and talked with God will listen to us. Others won't. This is the way to know whether a message is really from God, for if it is, the world won't listen to it. Now, what are they not going to listen to? All right, well, let's get specific about that. He's going to, because this is a, a connected thought. This isn't separate. Dear friends, that's us. Let us practice loving each other. So the writer spent some time in the earlier chapter with this idea, right? False teachers, don't get hung up on that. Think critically. But ultimately, the ultimate test, whether something is from God, and there's many tools in your toolkit, but here's one of the main tools in your toolkit. Is it driving you deeper into love for God and for others? Then that's a great sign that that message is from God. If you sense, man, I'm, that, that sounds like a loving God. That sounds like a loving act. That sounds like a loving belief. That sounds like a loving path that this person's talking about then man you could you know start to say okay i might accept this message because that love is very um, visceral it's very real i like how he says let us practice loving each other 
we need to practice it because <laughs> You know, let's just be honest. We're humans. We, it doesn't come naturally sometimes. Maybe for some of us. Some of us, our personality profile, our Myers-Briggs, or what, what do you call those, Enneagrams, you know, might tend to be more empathetic and loving. Kind. But you know what? We're humans. And so the scripture is saying you might need to practice it. Maybe it doesn't come natural. That person at work where you just want to bam, 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 right? He's saying practice love. Maybe you already know in your brain. You know, if someone pops right in your eye, I need to practice love with that person. And it's going to take practice um, over and over again, showing them love, showing them kindness. By the way, that doesn't mean uh, being a stepping bag or what, what, what's that word? Um, stepping bag. Uh, there's another one. Uh, I don't know. Stepping stone. Um, stepping stone. Like you know, people just step on you. What was the other one? I heard. A rug. Yes. Yeah, you're just a rug. People can just step on, right? No. Um, you know, there are boundaries. There are, you can't let people abuse you. And like, you know, there are certain lines in the sand, but as much as within us, we're practicing love and kindness. And sometimes that with love and kindness means, hey, we got to gotta get a little space here uh, because of a person's abusive. Okay. So we're practicing loving one another. For love comes from those who are loving and kind show that they are the children of God and that they are getting to know him better. And so one significant thing about this message of love is that people actually see it. It's not just saying, hey, I love you. It's not just kind of like, oh, I'm a loving person. No, do people see that in your life? Is there evidence of your love towards others? Are you practicing it? Are you growing it each and every day? Um, show that they're getting on. But if a person isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God. For God is love. And by the way, that's a lot. I, you know, I've been a, around a lot of church and religion, and sometimes the most um, unloving people can be from churches and religion and Christianity. Not all the times. Sometimes you see the best of it and the worst of it, I guess like anything. But if a person isn't loving, it, it shows that he doesn't know God, for God is love. So let's not be the type of Christians that just say we love people, but we're really hateful and unkind and judgmental towards others. That's what we don't want to be. Speaking of showing love, God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into this wicked world to bring us to eternal life through his death. God showed it to us. He wasn't just a little, you know, platitudes that he said. He put some, you know, action behind his words. In this act, we see what real love is. It is not our love for God, but his love for us. When he sent his son to satisfy God's anger against our sins. And therein is God's love for you. Even as like a really bad person. It's, it's just amazing that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He still loved us even when we were at the bottom of the barrel. It, it's an amazing love. Dear friends, since God loved us as much as that, we surely ought to love each other too. And just kind of let, let that one sink in a bit. Kind of think about that one. Loving one another. Man, that's the... You know, the whole reason for this um, passage of Scripture. And it's one of the main reasons why we're here. Why are we going to church? Listen to the pastor. Yeah. So, you know, I can grow my faith. Yes, that's uh, absolutely. But the, one of the main things is that we can come here and just love, love each other. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I want to pray for you. Are you doing okay? I heard you had a rough week. Hey, I saw on Discord that this happened. How, how are things going? And doing our best to help each other out as best as we're able to. We surely ought to love each other too. If God loves us this much, then we're going to do that. Let's reflect the love of God. Now, for though we have never yet seen God, when we love each other, God lives in us. And his love within us grows ever stronger. So we're always leveling up our love. There's never a, like a level cap. Um, you know, like uh, in Final Fantasy, what, what's the level cap? It's 70 something. You know, there's, in love, there's not a level cap. Uh, his love grows us, uh, and his love within us grows ever stronger. And he has put his own Holy Spirit and proof to us that we are living with him, and he 
with us. So this is good news right here. That last thing about the Holy Spirit being within our spirits, the Holy Spirit within us, is because, uh, you know, fair enough, some of us are going to be like, man, this is, this is impossible. How am I going to love everybody? They're the, the political and the religious and, you know, all these issues and topics. And it's because God's Holy Spirit is going to help you. You're not on your own. going to help you love that person at work that's driving you nuts. Um, so he has put his Holy Spirit into our hearts. All right, let's go to the next one here. The next verse. And for me. And I'm starting to lag out a bit. I got new, uh, new internet. What's up, man? Bryce, you back? You giving me my, my, my love sign? Yeah, I love you too, man. I love you, brother. I can't hear you, though, but I love you. Uh, and furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now tell all the world that God sent his son to be their savior. Now, anyone who believes and says God has God living in him and he is living with God. We know how much God loves us because we have felt his love and because we believe in him when he tells us that he loves us dearly, because some of us might not actually believe that. You know, Pastor, that's that's fine and all, but I don't feel it. I don't think it. You don't know what I've been. You don't know where I've gone. You don't know who I am. I've, you know, time I've had some issues. Well, you know what? It's because we haven't believed when he tells us that he loves us dearly. He's telling us today through me as a messenger, God loves you. Do you believe that? God is love, and anyone who lives in love is living with God, and God is living that is the indicator that God loves you so much. How's my audio? So good? I feel like I'm lagging out a bit. Am I good, Ben? Audio? No, you're fine. You're Looks fine, like... DJ. Good, good. I see thumbs up. All right, all right. We'll keep going. So do we believe it? That's a great question for you to think about. Do you actually believe that? Um, and not only that, as we live with Christ, our love grows more perfect and complete. There, there's that idea. We're leveling up in our love all the time. So we will not be ashamed and embarrassed at the day of judgment, but can face him with confidence and joy because he loves us and we love him too. Beautiful. It's a beautiful relationship. And I know, we can't, like the Bible, just acknowledge, we can't see him. I like how the Bible acknowledges that. We, we, where is he? I don't, I don't see him. That's where faith comes in. That faith that we believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek them. And that he loves us. That's where the faith part kicks in in your spirit. Not feelings. Because feelings, I mean, that, that'll come and go all week, right? You'll, you'll feel it one day. You won't feel it the next. Maybe you won't feel it at all this week. But that's where faith is so important. That's where faith kicks in as well. All right. Um, we need have no fear of someone who loves us perfectly. So uh, oftentimes in religion, you'll find that the type of religion that teaches that God is angry, lightning bolts, he's sending people to hell, that type of thing. And there can be a fear and a dread. Now, in the Old Testament, it talks about the fear of the Lord, but it has the idea to do of reverence is, the, is the, how that word is used. But this fear and condemnation and this guilt and this um, darkness in your, in your mind about how you think God thinks about you, we we don't have to fear that, because he loves us perfectly. His perfect love for us eliminates all dread of what he might do to us, because there might be some people in here who think that I'm going to hell. You know, you wake up with those thoughts and you know condemnation and those feelings. But man, the reality is he loves you perfectly, and we don't have to dread him. So we have to like reprogram our brain, delete those viruses that are in our brain. You're going to things that that would creep in man just go ahead and delete that file empty the trash bin because you know when you delete the file on the computer it still goes that you know empty the trash bin and it's time to download some new software here's the software his perfect love for us eliminates all dread of what he might do to us if we are afraid it is for fear of what he might do to us and shows that we are not fully convinced that he really loves us Remember, he says we need to believe it, and we need to be fully convinced. Download that into the brain now. All right, doop, 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 it's coming down. Fully convinced. God loves me no matter how I feel. If I feel condemned or I feel dread or I feel these feelings, that is not connected to the software that says God loves you perfectly. And so if you have fear, if we have dread, 
then maybe we are not fully convinced that he really loves us. So you see him comes as a result of his, of his loving us first. So uh, what the writer is basically saying is we're, we're calling you to love. We're calling you to love yourself, to love your neighbor, to love your friends, to love your coworker. But if you're not connected to God's love, then how are you going to love your family and friends? How are you going to love your enemies? So we have to be fully convinced and experience God's love each and every day. And then we can show love to others. We have to experience it ourselves. And so that's why the writer is trying to get us like, hey, be fully convinced. Do you believe it? Brain, get out the other stuff that's telling you not that God's love is not with you. All right. If, if anyone says, I love God, but keeps on hating his brother, he is a liar. And so, man, it's some strong words, but it shows that the writer is very serious about it. if we hate people, if we would rather them not even be alive, that shows, you know, we, we're, we don't belong to what God is doing, his love. It's a liar. For if, uh, let's see here. For if he doesn't love his brother who is right there in front of him, how can he love God whom he has never seen? And God himself has says that one must love not only God, but his brother too. So we're not necessarily, talk, necessarily talking about siblings, just people around you. They're the brother and their humanity that's around you. To love all the people that you interact with, to salute the divinity in them. And that, my friends is the end, is the, is the last chapter, or the last verse of this particular chapter. Uh, John has one more chapter. He wants to tell us some, uh, some more powerful things, but you constantly see this vision, this reality, this truth of love that goes over and over and over again. The greatest commandment in the Bible, the greatest one, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then Jesus said the second co greatest commandment is like it. It's to love your neighbor as yourself. Take a moment. Look to your right. Look to your left. Look at these beautiful avatars all around you. You know? And this is who you're to love. You're to love your neighbor. You're to love your brother. To love your sister. To love each and every one uh, that's within us, uh, within this community today. So, don't be a hater. But love your brother. And uh, we... Uh, not only God, but our brother as well. And so that is the end of First John, so uh, chapter 4. So let's take a moment to pray. And uh, yeah, after I pray, uh, we'll take the usual uh, picture up here in front of the, uh, the, the stage right here. Now, and then we're going to go play a quick game of um, um, Squid Game, if anybody wants to. I'll throw up a portal in a few minutes, go play some Squid Game. Um, so yeah, all right, my friends. Uh, let's God, just thank you so much for this moment, and thank you for this scripture that is helping us to learn each other, helping us to be fully convinced that you love us, to be to fully believe that we're your children. And God, maybe there's those of us in here that don't believe it, that are not fully convinced, but, but, but before the day is over, may we know it 100% without a shadow of a doubt that we're loved by God. I like how the, when you read the scripture, it didn't say we loved us if we had a good week, if we were perfect, you know, we had our act together. No, it's, it's unconditional. That love is going to drive us to do good things. And we pray for your blessing for everyone in here. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, my friends, amen. All right, that's the end of church today, buddy. You guys can unmute if you had your uh, microphone muted. And let's take a quick picture. I'm going to circle around uh, Wolf right here. Stranger! Out in chat. Stranger! Yeah. Daddy, he's out cold. You know the deal. Short avatars in the front. Tall avatars in the back. You know. I'm six foot. I'm sorry. 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 I'm don't make fun of my height, Soto. No, I'm not. That is true. I remember that. 
DJ, Ranger's not cold again. Jen, are you gonna be Wait, Ranger's- Oh my god, he is. He's sleeping. He's sleeping. Rest in oh, peace, that's funny. Falling asleep in church. That's funny. Every time. Every <laughs> time. It wasn't that boring of a, a sermon. All right, everybody, get close. Ready? Everyone's friendly. Jenna, come in just a little bit. I'm trying not to just block touch, anyone's face. Touch. I think you're good so far. Keep it coming. That's Keep horrifying. <laughs> it is, <laughs> yes. In three, two, one, and... Got it. You, hey, everybody? You Perfect. Perfect. Let's do it. Let's do it. More horrifying. Let me stand up. One second. Hello, small. Summer, one. was that you? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that is a freaky <laughs> avatar. I'm not gonna lie. Wow. <laughs> I am not you know what's even worse more. is like this. Oh, we needed a mech to take this out. Look, Daddy, how you there. doing, man? Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, doing pretty good. How you doing, Wolf? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I'm actually, um, I'm actually in the process of thinking about uh, upgrading my PC from just a tower to one of those nice like, fans that are actually <laughs> <a> PC. Ranger! <laughs> Hello everybody, thanks for uh, joining us for VR Hi, Church. Hey there. Um, uh, we're going to be reading Cornerstone yeah. Church at 4pm, which is in about uh, 22 uh, minutes. Uh, hey, uh, until then, so I'll set you up with a recap it's of last week's crash. service. Uh, <laughs> you can watch until uh, no. we, we do the raid. Glad to see everybody. Just after the last sentence was read, And Pastor Bismick, I hand it over to you, my friend. Amen. So, okay. <laughs> that will be a tough sermon today again. Uh, so we go through, not maybe not the whole Bible, but we go chapter by chapter to, through many, many inter interesting books and letters within the Bible. And therefore, uh, we deal with everything that is in them. So we, we don't uh, exclude something. We don't say, ah, oh, that's maybe too harsh, uh, maybe next chapter or so. No, no, everything is included here to preach the full gospel. And this is cool. I like this. Um, sometimes it's challenging because some chapters are like, um, okay, where is the comforting part? Uh, it comes in the next chapter. So how? <laughs> uh, okay. So, but um, this is not one of those sermons. Uh, this is one, not one of those chapters. We are dealing with, uh, to, say that, to say it like this, we are dealing with first, um, the first letter of John. Um, and chapter three. In the first chapter, we heard John talking about anybody who says that he does not sin is a liar. So he, John knows that sometimes in life we do wrong, we harm other people, we plan dark plans to to um, do bad stuff in the secret, and then it got revealed um, by the light, and we say sorry. We are like, oh my gosh, how could I do this? How could I see this? How could I enjoy this? How could I say yes to this? So this is happening and a very spurry who says, hey, this is not happening to me anymore. He's a liar. So he's a liar. So this is chapter one, uh, one of the most important parts of chapter one for this sermon. The second part, uh, the second chapter, um, we find um, John addressing start addressing people he writes against so this letter is for the church and ag against some people and those people are uh, john calls infiltrators infiltrators okay those people are sus very very sus those people they're people that call themselves christians they say hey i'm a christian like you and they are not they try to deceive people, they try to harm people, they try to mislead people, lead people away from truth. That is very important. If you don't know those things, this message will be mixed up. So you have to know chapter one, you have to know chapter two, and now you know. So therefore, fasten your seatbelts as we go right into the sermon. So see how very much our Heavenly Father loves us, for He allows us to be called His children. Think of it. And we really are. That's the first part. That's the part where we have to build our fundament on not only on the sermon, uh, in the midst of the sermon, but also in our life. This is this is fundamental. The Holy Spirit. If you are in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says to you, He 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 um, 
he ensures you that you are God's son, that you're God's daughter. So this is in Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit says to us, is, is the ch uh, spirit of childhood in him, we say, Abba, Daddy, dear Father. That's very important because that means something already has changed. If I'm a child of my father, I can understand my father. If my father is German, I can speak German and I can understand German. If my father is the father in the spirit, is the God, is 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 um is God himself. I can understand his voice. I can understand the heavenly voice of my father because as I am born again, as I am born newborn again in the spirit, I can understand my father that dwells in the spirit. I can understand him uh, and not only in the spirit in but in every way, but he talks to us in the spirit. Our heavenly father is father above everything. He's the father of the birds, of the ducks. Of the, of the dogs, of the humans, okay? He's the, not, he's the, he's the creator of, the, of, the, of the, the whole world. So he is in the midst of it, okay? So I don't say he's just a spiritual God and stuff like this. But he, he talks to us. He, he t he's able to talk to his children in a spiritual way. And everybody who is born again, who's born again in Jesus, is born again in the spirit and able to listen to the Father. So when I say, I'm a child of God. This is not something I can write in my Instagram uh, biography. I'm a child of God. So that's okay. cool if you did this. Yeah, bless you. Okay, it's good. It's cool. Don't want to make fun of it. Sorry. But um, the, it is the, the more important thing is that there are mystical, mystical truth, truths behind this. Um, and one very important truth is if you're born again, and if you're born again in a way that you are now really a child of your father, you can, you can, you can understand your father. You are from the nature of your father, and therefore you can obey. You want to obey your father. So, um, yeah, this may be not the experience we made in our childhood. So, but. But um, in the most important things, the most important things, if my God to tells me, if, if, my, if my father, my earthly father tells me good things, I want to obey to those good things. If my heavenly father, who is now, my, who is now really also my father, who, who is now really my father, um, tells, me, tells me things I should do. When I'm from his nature, I want to do those things. That is very important. So therefore, um, yes, we still do bad things. Yes, I still sometimes do bad things. Yeah. But um, through being born again, through being born again in the spirit, I want to do more and more and more stuff that is good because I understand more and more and more that I'm from the nature of God, that I'm able to hear him, that I'm able to listen to him, and that I'm able to obey him. That's very important. Um, but since pe most people don't know God, naturally, they don't understand that we are his children. So by nature, I understand that I'm his, ch his child. By nature, I understand my God because I'm born again in the spirit. By nature, everybody of you does too because you're born again in Jesus Christ and, and empowered by the spirit. But by nature, all those people that ha have not made this experience, they don't understand you. They cannot understand you. If you're led by the Spirit, how can they understand this? Everybody who is led by the Spirit understands people who, is, who are led by the Spirit. But people outside, by nature, they're, they don't, they're not dumb or something. They're not unintelligent or something. But they cannot understand because, because this mystical shift did not yet happen to them. And therefore, that, that this happens also to them, it is important that we bring them this good news. news. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is now peace between us and God possible. Peace in a way that we can be born again right now through baptizing, can be born again right now in a way that we are now new creatures, able to listen to God, able to be empowered by the power of God. And this is a new life. What you find there is a new, 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 new life. And this life is worth it. This is, this is why you should choose Jesus. <laughs> this is why you should choose Jesus. Yeah. And so therefore, then naturally you will understand that you are his child. Dear friends, we are already God's children right now. And we can't even imagine what it is going to be like later on. Yeah. Later on. Oh, it's also a part, it's already a party, but afterwards, whew, my gosh! Um, but we kn do know this: that when we uh, that when he comes, we will be like him as a result of seeing him as he really is. <laughs> okay, so it's getting to get better. It's it's going to get better and better.
And everyone who really believes this will try to stay pure because Christ is pure. If I'm aware of this, if I'm aware I will see him again, if I'm aware of those truths, if I'm aware that I'm already a child of God, in those moments, in those moments, if I meditated on this, if I prayed over this, um, I won't, I, I won't, I am not able to sin. I'm not a, how, how, how am I able to sin if I am aware of this? The, the times in my life when I do bad, bad stuff are those times when I'm not aware of all those truths. When I'm, when I, when, when I got deceived, when I, when my, when my viewpoint is, is mixed up by other stuff. So therefore I need church. Therefore I need, need good sermons. I need worship. I need Christian friends who remind me I need, I need empowering testimonies. I need the word of God. I need the spirit of God. And if I'm aware, if, if I got deceived so much that, uh, that every, uh, that all of this is far away, then I'm, then I'm able to sin. Then you are able to sin. But, uh, but beside that, beside those moments right now, when you think, ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for, for everything you have done for me. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about you. Thank you. Thank you that you, uh, that you, um, helped me to get born again. So now I'm a child of my father. In those moments, how can you sin then? It's impossible. So, and this is very, very good news. So, um, and everyone who really believes this will try to stay pure because Christ is pure. So, this is what it, what it, well, this is what it means here. I, I think so. You have to uh, prove yourself. So, yes, it's your responsibility to prove or disprove what I said here. Um, but those who keep on sinning now, now we come to the difficult parts, huh? But those who keep on sinning are against God. For every sin is done against the will of God. So now you're mixed up, huh? <laughs> because uh, what? I thought, I thought if I sin, Christ will forgive me. Jesus Christ will forgive me. Yes, that's the case. And this is what I, why I reminded you of 1 John chapter 1. There it is. If anybody says you're not a sinner, uh, if anybody says I'm, I'm not sinning anymore, he's a liar. We all need, we all still need the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. But there are, this is not addressed to, to, to people that are in Christ. This is, this is addressed to people that call themselves Christians to deceive other Christians. They are not Christians in their mind, but they try to, to, to haunt Christians, to put them back into darkness. And John, John knows that in, back in those, those times, the early church, there were good Christians, Christians focused on, on Jesus, but, and there were bad Christians, there were um, deceivers, there were, in, there were infiltrators, non-Christian infiltrators calling themselves Christians. And how can, and, and real Christians thought about themselves, so how can we decide whether if it's a Christian or if it's an infiltrator? Huh? How can we? By, by the fruits. Because everybody who still wants to sin, who still notoriously wants to sin, he is one of those infiltrators. So, and therefore, this is good news for us. So that we can see those people and point and say, okay, I will not make myself one with you because you are a deceiver. So for those who keep on sinning are against God. For every sin is done against the will of God. And you know that he became a man so that he could take away our sins and that there is no sin in him, no missing of God's will at any time in any way. So if we stay close to him, obedient to him, we won't be sinning either. I already talked about this. But as for those who keep on sinning, they should realize this, this they sin because they have never really known him or become his so to all these infiltrators and deceivers that say oh, i also have the power of god now they're notoriously sinning they want the bad stuff and they they are living in darkness and they want you to pull you also in darkness like oh it's like a squid game huh you know those get back into darkness so uh, and this is what they do. And this is where you know, okay, um, I don't need to call everybody a Christian that calls himself a Christian. And people that say, hey, come to us. We are also, um, you, you, you have to call me a Christian because, because, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, because if I call myself that way, you have to call myself that way too. Um, that is not the case. So therefore, um, there are Christians where you can say, um, I cannot make myself have one with you and things you, that you do because i think uh with your mindset and with the way you are living you help darkness growing and not decaying you help not you are not a fighter for light you're not born from light but you're born from darkness so oh dear children don't let anyone deceive you about this uh, okay if
you are constantly doing what is good, it is because you are good. Ooh. That doesn't mean that you can't call yourself good. Yeah? You cannot say, oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm so good. Because Jesus himself says, hey, don't call anybody good. The Father in heaven is good. When somebody he said to him, good, good rabbi. Huh? So it is not, this doesn't allow you to say you are good, but <laughs> to say clear, um, to repeat this constantly doing, if you're constantly doing what is good, that is, it is not because, not because you're, uh, you're, uh, you're strong or uh, you're better than anybody. No, because you are, because you are good, even as he is, because he is good. You do good stuff. You have, you have the nature of goodness in you. And you have somebody in you that wants to obey, that wants to do the good stuff. And this person is good. You are good, even as he is. But those people, all of you deceivers, if you keep on sinning, it shows that you belong to Satan, who since he first began to sin has kept steadily at it. But the Son of God came to destroy these works of the devil. So are we building up works of the devil or are we <clears throat> destroying it? That is, the, that is not a question for a Christian. A Christian knows, I want to build up good stuff. I want to destroy stuff of the enemy. I don't want to build up structures that, that are devilish, that are satanish. So, and I... Mm, I don't want to go into this very, very much. And and with doing doing the works of Satan, it's not only literally Satanists, okay? Having they the worshiping Satan and, and having black mass or so so something some cringe things like this. No, those are people that constantly trying to plan destructible systems that harm other people. Those people that try to establish the system of slavery. Uh, they they thought about how to get more and more slaves, how to harm more and more people for their own profit. So this those are those are Satanists. Huh? They don't need to worship Satan or have Satanistic symbols or something like something cringe like this. Um, those those people um, help to build up uh, buildings of Satan, and Jesus Christ came to destroy those things. So so uh, so it is our wish as newborn Christians. It's our wish. To, to destroy those things. And if you know Christians that call themselves Christians, but building up those structures constantly, they know they harm other people uh, with this. They know they, they, um, they, they do this just for their own profit. Maybe those persons are not reborn. Those persons do not know the Holy Spirit and have not this new nature, cannot be called good because nothing good is inside of them when they constantly bring out fruits of darkness. These persons who has been, this this uh, the person who has been born into God's family does not make a practice of sinning because now God's life is in him. That's that's the case. If you're asking, hey, how can I beg, can I can I go away from sin? So uh, I have to know. I have to constantly meditate on the fact that there is a new life in me and this new life wants to dwell. This new life wants to to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow. And if I rely on that, if I'm aware of God's life in me, I live otherwise. Uh, Bill Johnson from Bethel Church, uh, he talked it like this. If this new life or if the, the, if the spirit, but all this the new life is like a dove on your shoulder and you are aware of the shoulder. Imagine how you go downstairs. <laughs> this shoulder, uh, this, this dove is on your shoulder. Okay. And how would you go downstairs? Would you jump and run? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Or would you go slowly, aware of the dove? You don't want to the dove to go aware of this. Okay, I don't. I don't say that the spirit will fly away or something like this. But if you are aware of something, you have it in mind. You meditate on it. You don't. You don't forget about it. So, therefore, let us have in mind there is already God's life, God's Zoe life, God's big life, God's, 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 God's. Um, God's, God's mighty spirit inside of us, bringing us a life that we can live, a new life, a new uh, consciousness, a new, a new um, art of living, a new kind of living. No, So this is already in us. Let's meditate on this. Let's focus on this because we as God's children, we can live this new life. And it, within this new life, there is change of character. There is help against sin. In this new life, God can help you to come uh, to, to get more and more away from drugs, more and more away from having bad, having a, um, establishing bad, bad relationships. So more and more and more, not maybe once, uh, not maybe everything at one time, but more and 
more and more and more. This new life will grow if you let it. This new life will grow if you are aware of it. And therefore, you can do the will of God. You can obey because you want to, because it is your new nature. But you have to know this, that this is all already here. This is nothing just for the afterlife. It is all already ra right now here. And this is good news. My gosh, this is good news. God's life is in me, so I can, if, if I'm at some there are some thoughts in me they are not full of love they are definitely not full of love and I, and I say Jesus I just can't bring you this please change character in this and that point and, and without without God's life it would be impossible but this revolutionary life is already in, inside these shoulders between these shoulders and therefore I can I can smile <laughs> not because I'm already finished and everything is cool but I can smile because I know the victory will come because he has has it already done uh, so he can't keep on sinning for this new life has been born into him and controls him he has been born again my gosh I can will won't add anything to it I think that that sums it up what I said with many words so now we can tell who is a child of God and who belongs to Satan that's very important we have to we have to see this because some people say I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and we and we should not follow every Christian. Huh? We should not follow every example. Uh, where whoever is living a life of sin and doesn't love his brother, this is another fruit where you can see it. His brother shows that he's not in God's family. Huh? They are Christians full of anger, full of hate, uh, gnashing of teeth in Facebook commentaries and Instagram commentaries. Oh, oh, those those conservative Christians, those conservative American Christians. Uh, we German Christians, we cannot make ourselves one with them. Those 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 aren't even Christians. Or oh, those oh, those liberal Christians. Oh my gosh, oh, I, the, are they even Christian anymore? They're uh, they they are, are full of compromises. Blah 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 blah. No, that is not that is not how we deal with with each other yeah we deal with those people that are constantly sinning with we deal with those people that have darkness inside of them but to hate other christians just because they have another opinion on homosexuality or abortion or weapons <laughs> dear americans <laughs> uh, have fun preaching about this in in, in europe <laughs> um just hating each other because of those points that shows hey there is some darkness and we should we should we should um, we should stand against this darkness and say, hey, dear American brother with fighting for liberal gun laws, I love you. I love you. And I don't understand not every point you make, but in the midst of everything, we have Jesus Christ in common. And that is enough. <laughs> so, that's an interesting point here. Um, M -m -m -m, because that's so funny. It's uh, uh, that's always a point between uh, German and, and American Christians where we differ much. And and then another way it is uh, about uh, some discussions about beer. Huh? You can imagine that German Christians thinks think of uh, some things otherwise than some Americans do. And uh, I think um, I'm on the German side. <laughs> Just okay. Um, okay, that's. Uh, me trying to be funny. Whoever is living a life of sin and doesn't love his brother shows that he is not in God's family. Yeah, for sure. That is the fruit. For the message to us from the beginning has been that we should love one another. We are not to be like Cain who belonged to Satan and killed his brother. Why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing wrong and he knew very well that his brother's life was better than his. So don't be surprised, dear friends, if the world hates you. So if we love other Christians, it proves that we've been delivered from hell and given eternal life. Oh, that's that's nice. Huh? So do you love other Christians? I think you do. Hopefully you do. And if you do so, I have good news for you. <laughs> it proves that we have been delivered from hell and given eternal life. Oh, that's quite. A, that's kind of nice. Thank you, John. <laughs> but a person who doesn't have she love for that. others is headed for eternal death. Yeah. How 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 not? Yeah. <laughs> so so so. I think this is this is so easy. If a person is full of hate, oh, and he hates other Christians. He, he loves every person in his little sect of 10 people who agrees with his theology, and he hates other Christians. Oh, those Catholics. Oh, they, 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 adore, they adore the Pope, blah, blah, blah. Or all oh, those evangelicals. They, oh, they, they have the spirit of darkness, or blah, 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 blah. So, no, no, we don't think that way. So, but a person who doesn't have love for others is headed for eternal death. Anyone who hates his Christian brother is really a murderer at heart. And you know that no one, no, no one wanting for murder has eternal life with him. This makes sense, huh? This eternal life should mean something. If it is possible to have an eternal life, 
and have such thoughts of, of murder and hatred, then this eternal life isn't very powerful, huh? No, no, no. This, yeah, but this eternal life, well, it has, it has power. And therefore, some things are not possible anymore. We know that real love is from Christ's example in dying for us. And so we also ought to lay down our lives for our Christian brothers, of course. But if someone who is supposed to be a Christian has money, just an example, enough to live well, and sees a brother in need and won't help him, how can God's love be within him? It's also true. Yeah? Those deceivers, those infiltrators, yeah, they have money, money, money. They have five private jets. And when they see a brother that is suffering, that is starving, they're like, oh, oh maybe he isn't believing enough. Huh? Maybe, maybe he isn't in the truth because I'm in the truth and I'm rich. And he's not in the truth, therefore he, uh, he's not rich, therefore he's not in the truth. Yeah, those are not, those are not thoughts with, filled with eternal life. Those are thoughts filled with darkness. Uh, little children, let us stop just saying we love people. Let us really love them and show it by our actions. Welcome to season five of VR Church. That is something what we want to focus on. Yeah, love that is uh, uh, performed by action. Uh, then we will know for sure by our actions that we are in God's side and our consciousness will be clear even when we stand before the Lord. But if we have bad consciousness, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes bad consciousness and we and feel that we have done wrong the lord will surely f feel it even more for he knows everything we do um but dear brothers and friends if our consciences are clear we can come to the lord with perfect assurance and trust and get whatever we ask for because we are obeying him and doing the things that please him again 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 john says in first john chapter one if we do bad, we go to God and ask for forgiveness. And that's still the case, and that's still important. Um, but but it is not all. It is not the the relationship between us and God is not always. Jesus, please forgive us. Thank you. 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 No, this is not a relationship. There are good. There are, there are parts in your relationship where it's tough. Okay, but there are also parts in your relationship with God where it's good. Yeah. Where you can say, thank you, Jesus. I think everything is right now on track. So it's quite good. Not everything perfect, but I think where I stand right now, I think I'm right. And I think uh, I'm, uh, we do, we have a good relationship. Can you say this about you? Maybe, maybe you should huh? ask the spirit if it is so, but maybe you should. And therefore, um, therefore, it is possible to have a good relationship with God. If not, uh, then this would be, won't be a gospel anymore, huh? But yeah, I can confess and I can give a testimony that it is possible to feel, to have, to, can, can, to, to, to be able to come to God with good feelings. With, hey, Jesus, I come to you and I feel, and I don't feel unworthy. I don't feel all oh, bad and I don't feel, oh, I'm too dark for you. Oh. No, I think I, I, I come to God and say, hey, I'm a child of you. The Spirit in me uh, testifies, um, uh, testifies this to my spirit that I am your child. And therefore, thank you, Father. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I come to you with boldness. I come to you. Um, I come to you as a son uh, yeah, with, with some holy fear, but not with a fear of darkness and fear, oh, oh, please don't kill me. So no, 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 no. This is, this is what I really can testify, that this is possible. And this is very, very good. And, and it is even possible. Uh, this is a very tough thing. But it's even possible, it's not, yeah, it's even possible to, syn to, to be so connected with the Father, to be synchronized with Him, that His will and your will is synchronized. And it is in, in, in this moment, in this moment of synchronization, the things the Father wants are the things you want. And otherwise, the things you want are the things the Father wants. So maybe you disagree at this point. Now, this is a very really special pessimistic point, but this is what I believe. Um, uh, uh, um, yeah, that, that there is a synchronization and it could mean, it could mean that, um, uh, that you, what it says here, huh? and get whatever we ask for, get whatever we ask for, huh? not get whatever, uh, God, God is approving this and this not, but get whatever we ask for. Okay. This is bold. Huh? There are some worship songs say, uh, thank you that you give us what we, what we want. And some persons are changing those worship songs because they know it gives us whatever we need. No, 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 no. Here, whatever we ask for. Uh, <laughs> and that's, yeah, no, that's not always the private chat, but, but <laughs> I don't even want to have a private chat by the way, but, but, um, 
but it 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 means something. It means something. So uh, I and I I interpret this in this way. It is the synchronization of the will of the Father and your will, and there are many things possible then, because we are obeying Him and doing the things that pleases Him, and this is what God says we must do. So if you are asking what, what okay. Uh, what do we have to do to have all of this? Uh, believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Believe not only in the name, that's not a, a, a wizard spell or something. Believe in the person, Jesus Christ. In his son, Jesus Christ. And love one another. Mm. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe in the person, if you meditate on who he is, if you are open that the Holy Spirit shows you who God is, who Jesus is, is then of course yeah you will love one another he he will surely show sh he will surely show you no he will surely show you love for for the other person so that was a difficult sentence for a german person those who want those who do what god says they are living with god and he with them